In this video, we are going to be looking at the SQL basics of information schema. And last week we looked at the tables object, and this week we're going to be looking at the columns object. And this is one that I use quite a bit. Now it should be of note that the following demo uses Microsoft SQL Server and some relational databases may not support these. So keep that in mind. You might not find this object. The good news is, is if you know how to use meta information in general, regardless of where it's at, you can quickly figure out what you need to get so that you can use this meta information. <clears throat> Now I am going to be doing a demo here, and I'm going to be doing live coding, which you are never supposed to do, but I'm also the kind of person who does no bay rules, so um, that makes for an interesting video. So this might be a little bit longer than six minutes, because the thing about live coding is it only will make you look stupid, number one, and number two, uh, it's when everything goes wrong, which is kind of the reason why I like doing it. It's kind of like improv comedy. It's not when it goes right, but when it goes wrong. So <clears throat> that being said, we'll look at this table here, and this will make a good table for us to clone. <clears throat> And we see when we select information uh, schema.columns, this table let's show them, we see there's five columns here, and we see that these columns, or in this object here, we get some various information. Notice that we get the table catalog, the table schema, the table name, and we get like the column name, the ordinal position. This is the position of the column. So think about that. That would be uh, very important. Like this is the first column, the second, etc. cetera. Um, we also get the column default. <clears throat> now, ID is an identity 1-1 one, one here. And so I'm going to note that because we don't actually get that information here. But that is something that is true in this case, but we don't see that. Uh, we also see the defaults, though there are other defaults that we do see. We see is the column nullable, um, and we see that in this case it's not, but these other ones are. And then we see other information, like we see the data type. Uh, we see, <clears throat> excuse me, I like the character maximum length. So if it's defined very specifically, like in this case the var car is, right, uh, we see that. And of course, keep in mind, some of these have defaults in general, like for instance, tiny int. You can look that definition up and that has uh, defaults there. And then of course, we see some of the other things as well. By the way, remember that in the uh, information schema.tables, there was table catalog, table schema, table name, and then I believe it was base type, or well, no, no, it was uh, something type. And <clears throat> The idea there is that you get a lot of that information from information schema columns. So as especially as a DBA and a developer, I rarely use information.tables uh, or information schema.tables. I almost am always using columns. So with that said, I'm going to move my mic a little bit here, and then I'm going to start doing some live coding, which again, you're not supposed to do. So this is a good example of what you shouldn't do, <clears throat> but I'm going to do it anyway. So let's suppose we want to clone this table on a different database and we'll just create a copy of this table. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a copy of the table definition. We are going to exclude the ID field as an identity one one um, in this case, but we are gonna take the other defaults here. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use information schema.columns. In fact, I had a colleague reach out the other day and they were asking about dynamic SQL and I don't think it involved something with tables, but the bottom line is, is that this is kind of a good practice uh, in general of a way you can do that. So that being said, let's see. The first thing I want to do is I want to declare a table variable, and we will do Navar car, and we will do 20, and then we will declare SQL, and we will do Navar car, and I'm going to start at 500. I don't think I'm going to need that much, but we'll start there. And so <clears throat> I am going to go ahead and just say what this table is up front, and we'll call it let's show them, and then I'm going to do this as a blank, and I'll explain that in a second because I'm going to be... Um, adding to this blank string. That's what this is. This is a blank string. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set <clears throat> this blank string. And I have to remember to do this right. If I recall correctly, I have to start with the plus equals. Um, so SQL plus equals, because we are adding to a blank string. I'm going to do create table, and then I'm going to do plus, and I'm going to do a quote name, and then I'm going to do uh, table. And then I'm going to do plus, and then there needs to be a space, I believe, and then, of course, uh, closing quotation marks. <clears throat> and then I'm going to do select SQL, and this is only just to check my work. Typical math thing right here. Okay, and so we'll see. Okay, so that's, that is correct. That's what I want it to look like for right now. So we have the create table. We have in brackets. Let's show them. Again, we're going to exclude the schema, but keep in mind we have uh, the schema here. If we look at this, we have a schema that we can access, and as you see how we're going to be creating these uh, this table definition, you'll be able to do that yourself um, if you want. <clears throat> but in this case, I want to predominantly focus on just how we can use this to create a clone of the table because I think that'll make a good demo. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to actually just write the select query and then I'll add the SQL to it later on. So let's do the select query first. So I'm going to just copy this. <clears throat> And then what I'm going to do is, let's see, the, the way that it works is 
it's usually the column name, so column name, and you can see I'm getting this from this table. So as I'm typing this out, you can see where I'm getting this. And of course, I'm gonna put this in quote name as well. So we have column name, and then we have plus, and I'm going from memory here. Uh, there's a space, right? Yeah, there's a space, and then plus, <clears throat> and then there is, uh, uh, there's data type, that's right. So quote name, and there's data underscore type. And the reason why I'm doing it this way, and I am kind of cheating here, is just to look at this. Okay, so ID, tiny int, that's correct. Okay, now, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back to this really fast. All right, so we see that two of these columns are defaults. So what I wanna do is I want to put a default here if they're a default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add a case win. <clears throat> By the way, you're seeing me apply some of the other concepts we've discussed on this YouTube channel. So if you're it's like, what is this? Well, I've discussed case wins on this YouTube channel as well. So you have case win. So case win, the column default is not null, okay? Then what we want to do is we want to space and we want to type default and space and then we want to add the column default. Column default, there we go. All right, <clears throat> and then Okay, that's correct. And then else, nothing, end, plus, comma. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, oh yeah, I need to add a plus here. This is why you don't live code, see? It's like, uh, it is not null, oh, <laughs> then, not plus. <laughs> uh, all right, there we go. <clears throat> Okay, and we have ID tiny int, that's correct. We have default uh, date, we have date time, default, okay. That's correct, that's correct, that's correct, that's correct. Okay, cool. <clears throat> now we do see on our table here, we have an ending character, which is a comma, and we don't want this. So we'll get rid of this in a second. But the next thing we wanna do is we want to do a select SQL, and we're gonna do plus equals again. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the typical math concept of showing our work. <clears throat> so let's see what we have. All right, and so we have our create table and we have everything in there. We do not have the ending, uh, what is that called, parentheses, huh? thinking live. Um, yes, yeah, so we don't have the ending parentheses. So <clears throat> the next thing that we wanna do now is we basically wanna chop off the last character. In this case, that would be that comma. And then we wanna add <clears throat> the ending parentheses. So I'm trying to remember the functionality here, I believe is substring, substring. And I can cheat because it'll tell me the expression. It's always nice when you have IntelliSense. Starting position, we'll say zero, and we will do uh, the length of the string, which is SQL, minus one, and we'll see what this turns into. Minus one. Okay, that looks correct. Let's see what happens. All right. Ah, it cut off the last bracket. Interesting. So what, hold on, last bracket, and then there's a comma. What happens if I do this? <clears throat> and this is just me playing around, so. This is why you don't live code. <laughs> I'm gonna say that a lot this time. Okay, there we go. So it's, there we go, XML. Okay, cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna then add the ending parentheses and we'll see if we have a legitimate quote or uh, create table statement. <clears throat> All right, now we do this. Okay, and we have this. So now we're gonna copy and paste this and see if SMS complains. It's like, ah, it's not legitimate. Of course, this table does already exist. So I'm gonna have to do it this way. And we see, oh, it goes off screen. So let me uh, make it simple for everybody to see what we are looking at right here. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna enter these values down. Enter this down, enter this down, this down. So far it's not complaining, so you'll see. And then this down. That's kind of the standard. Oh, I did that wrong, but okay, well, whatever. All right, and then we'll create the table. And we see, if we do let show them, we now have created our other table. So <clears throat> as you see, there's some dynamic nature that we uh, did here with, uh, I was gonna say, yeah, it probably doesn't need to be 500. That could probably have been like 200 or something. But with this dynamic nature here, what we did was we were created a clone of a table from a base table. And that is actually something that I have used uh, information schema dot columns quite a bit. That's probably the reason why this was such a smooth demo. It's relatively smooth compared to some of my other ones. It's because I've done this a lot <clears throat> and uh, haven't done it as much in uh, T-SQL as PowerShell, at least recently. But um, this is definitely one of the things we can do with it. And you can see uh, we can create clones and then let's say copy a table over to another server. And it makes it more dynamic if we need that functionality.